Naoya was an ugly loner who finally stopped simping over other girls when his childhood friend Saki agreed to date him. However, after they start going out, another girl Najisa went ahead and confessed her love for Naoya. Not having the courage to reject such a cutie, Naoya proposed to double time them. Soon, more girls fell in love with him and their lives became one hell of a roller coaster ride. Naoya finally gathers up the courage and confesses his love to his childhood friend Saki. He is overjoyed when she accepts his proposal as he never expects to touch a female in his life. One day, when they both are in class, Saki asks Naoya in a joking manner to not cheat on her while she is away. Naoya, who can't even take a joke, takes her seriously and hugs her. Saki, being embarrassed by the whole situation, takes off. Later, Naoya is on the roof when suddenly Najisa approaches him and catches him off guard by saying that she has feelings for him. Naoya is beyond shocked while Najisa apologizes for suddenly barging in on him and introduces herself. She asks him to rate her and receives a solid 10. This makes Najisa glad as the work she put in to impress this loser didn't go to waste. Afterward, Najisa tries to bribe him with her home-cooked meals and as he is enjoying the food, she takes the opportunity and confesses her feeling. Naoya rejects her as he already has a girlfriend. However, Najisa doesn't lose hope and promises to confess again sometime later. As she is about to walk away, Naoya starts to regret his decision and gives the idea of dating both of them at the same time to which Najisa agrees. Later, he introduces Najisa to Saki who finds her freaking adorable and wants to get to know her better. They spend time together in karaoke, playing sports, and eating her homemade cooking. In the end, Naoya tells her the idea of dual timing as he can't bring himself to say no to Najisa. This turns Saki into a villain from a low-budget ice guy as she punches the hell out of Naoya. Saki, who is confused about this whole situation, asks Najisa how she is okay with this, and she replies that she is okay with it as long as she gets to date Naoya. Najisa starts to bribe Saki with Najisa cooking and offers her a deal of 30,000 yen per month. As a last option, he bows in front of her and begs her. He says that even though this idea might sound completely insane, he will be trying his best to make sure that one day they both will be glad to have dated him. Saki finally gives in and accepts his proposal. After the deal is done, Naoya takes it up a notch and decides to live together in the same house. Once they are settled, Najisa goes ahead to cook food. After enjoying the freshly cooked meal, Saki goes to take a bath. Later, Najisa joins her in the bathtub, and looking at her perfect body makes Saki anxious. Najisa goes ahead and tells Saki that she is free to mess around with Naoya all night as she doesn't want to interrupt their relationship. Saki instantly clears up her misunderstanding by saying that her cowardly boyfriend does not have the courage to do such acts and they have not even kissed yet. Saki suddenly realizes that Naoya will be doing cultured stuff with Najisa as well which makes her run out of the bath to confront Naoya. However, Naoya being a cherry boy ends up giving up on the cultured stuff as a whole which ultimately makes Saki a little disappointed. It is night time, and they are all getting ready for bed. Saki, after seeing such a cute girl right in front of her, gets anxious. After getting changed, both of them go outside just to find out Naoya has laid three futons for them side by side. This situation makes Saki think that Naoya is sure to make a move on them while they sleep, especially on Najisa. So, Saki decides to stay awake and secretly listen to their conversation. Naoya and Najisa, who think that Saki is asleep, start to converse. The conversation starts to heat up and Naoya grabs her hands. Saki can't control her curiosity and removes the blanket, thinking that Naoya's rusty pipe might be getting some action, only to find out that they are just lying together, which makes her extremely embarrassed. Later at around dawn, Najisa wakes up to make breakfast for everyone. Afterward, she sees their phones and curiosity gets the best of her so she picks up Saki's phone and unlocks it using her finger. After unlocking the phone, she goes straight to her browsing history, which is filled with some questionable stuff, apart from the cultured history. Her private account has all sorts of posts of her lashing out at others, however, the one about Najisa has some positive things which make her happy. Soon, Naoya wakes up and sees Najisa browsing through Saki's phone. Coincidentally, Saki also wakes up at the same time. Naoya, who is trying to cover up for Najisa, tells Saki that he is browsing through her history. A volcano erupts in her head as she remembers all the things she has been searching for. Saki does everything to convince Naoya that her history is for her friend. Naoya, who does not even know anything about the history keeps on encouraging her with pleasurable scenarios. And out of embarrassment, Saki ends up punching him in the face. The next morning, as they are eating breakfast, Saki asks Najisa about school and she replies that she has been missing school for quite some time. Naoya ends up taking responsibility and offers to teach her to make up for all the lost school time. After a while, Najisa is not able to solve anything and ends up going to the bathroom. 
She starts learning stuff from her mobile and half an hour passes. Saki and Naoya get concerned and go to ask Najisa if she is alright and the only excuse she can come up with is that the situation is dire. A moment of silence is performed by both of them to motivate her during her difficult times. After a while, she comes back all motivated to solve the question, however, she fails miserably again. The next day, as they are leaving for school, Saki tells them not to disclose their weird situation as it would make the national news for someone like Naoya to get two hot girlfriends. In class, Najisa is sitting alone as everyone is staring at her. Naoya is about to reveal their relation to the class, but Saki strikes him again and takes Naoya to the rooftop. After getting to the rooftop, she explains to him that the other lonely boys would take him to a dark alley if they got to know his two-timing situation. Najisa interrupts their conversation and tells them that she is alright with being the lonely one at school, and there is no need to worry about her. Najisa offers to let them eat lunch while she sits somewhere alone. Saki tells her that they don't need to be strangers just to hide their secret. Later, they go to the top of the roof and eat lunch together in secrecy, listening to Najisa's sweet words. They both can't control their voices which make the round-headed teacher spot them. They make a run for it and go to another secret location. The location is a restroom at the back of the school filled with so much crap that even the school cleaner has abandoned. Later, they go to the back of the restroom, which somehow still smells the same. After abandoning this location, they go to the girls' restroom. Saki rejects this location and as they are exiting the restroom, two girls happen to see them coming out together. But they quickly turn around as they can't comprehend the fact that someone like Naoya is getting some action. Their last option is the gym storage room. The only way to get in is to climb through the window, and as Naoya is helping Najisa climb through it his eyes are blessed with Najisa's underworld. Once they go inside, they are able to make some room for themselves and eat to their heart's content. Every day, Najisa cooks something different for them which make both of them feel blessed. Looking at her work hard all the time makes Saki think that Najisa always works very hard for Naoya whereas she is always messing around, doing nothing but having fun. This makes her realize that even a miserable guy like Naoya would get bored of her if she doesn't put in any effort. The only thing she can come up with is to make her cultured browsing history a reality. She makes an attempt, but it goes south. The next attempt is to cook. She puts the curry on the stove while she browses through her phone, which results in the curry getting burnt. She realizes that it is just a matter of time till Naoya will be hypnotized by Najisa and will break up with her. With that, the only choice left is to help Naoya finally lose his V-card. She strips down and jumps on top of Naoya, grabs his hand, and places it on herself. Even though she is filled with embarrassment, Naoya doesn't even react as it feels the same as if he was holding a flat board. Saki understands that a cultured guy like him always goes for the girl's talents instead of personality, and she storms out and goes to her own house next door. Najisa asks about the whole situation and after hearing that she is alone with Naoya in the house, her cultured side awakens. Naoya on the other hand decides not to sleep until he has made up with Saki. The next day, he writes a ton of love letters for her, but she returns them to him. He tries to persuade her with all sorts of things including 100,000 worth of balance in her favorite game League of Legends, bunch of cakes, records a lot of puppy videos, and makes notes from his classwork for her but nothing works. In the end, Najisa grabs his hand and puts it on body. Saki witnesses all of it and jumps across the two houses in order to confront her thirsty boyfriend. Saki is now trapped with Naoya and Najisa and has to answer their questions. The reason behind her mood swing is that Najisa is better than her in every aspect. As she is about to leave, Naoya stops her and tells her that he is happy just by being in a relationship with her and she is not required to do anything. Saki gets mad and punches him in the face. She tells Naoya that he should be willing to accept her help from time to time. Naoya tries to disagree as he is the only one responsible for the whole two hot girls one loser scenario. He thinks he needs to be the one responsible. Najisa interrupts Naoi and tells him that she agrees with Saki and that they both will be devoting some time of the day to help just as he is always helping them. At night, both Saki and Najisa are enjoying dinner while Naoi is sleepy. They both discuss getting to know each other. Saki tells Najisa about her obsession to playing games and invites her to play. As they start playing the worn out, free version of Call of Duty, Najisa keeps on losing and she eventually gives up but Saki encourages her to play the game until she gets at least one elimination. She agrees, and they go ahead and play a lot of games, but she is not able to get a single elimination. Coincidentally, they come across some FK players and Saki tells Najisa that this is the perfect opportunity to get her first elimination. She tries her best, fixes her aim, and finally shoots a gun. However, the person she eliminates is not the FK player but her teammate Saki. Afterward, they both start laughing and enjoying the moment. Later Najisa shows Saki the influencer who got views just because of her cute face. Naoya notices their school uniform in the thumbnail of that video. 
The next day at school, as they are enjoying lunch, Najisa shows them the thumbnail they had seen yesterday, and how the owner had changed it to something else in order to hide the uniform. Soon after, a blonde girl climbs through the window. At first, she thinks that all three of them are busy performing some cultured acts and decides to enjoy the live session. However, Naoya spills the beans and tells her about their relationship. Even though they tell her to keep it a secret, she starts enjoying the situation and teasing them. Naoya steps in and offers to pay 200,000 yen to keep her mouth shut but this is less than what she makes per month. However, Najisa quickly realizes that the girl in front of them is the same girl who was in that video they were watching earlier, the MeTuber, Milika. She instantly tenses up and tries to say otherwise but her tongue accidentally slips. This makes Saki realize that now they have a secret about her as well. After agreeing to keep each other's secret safe, Rika makes an announcement. She has decided to go out with the lifeless dude standing in the middle. Rika confesses to Naoya and wants to be his third girlfriend. Najisa sees through her obvious lies and finds out that the only reason she wants to go out with Naoya is so that he can be used as protection from stalkers. Naoya ends up rejecting her. Being rejected by an average Joe destroys Rika's pride and she can't comprehend the thought of her being rejected. After having no other choice, she decides to flex her talents. Naoya tells her that he is full in the ladies' department and that he would rather be with the girl he likes. Afterward, all three of them ignore her and jump out of the storage room window. Rika realizes that all three of them are living together and makes up her mind to live with them until he falls for her. Even though Naoya rejects her, she doesn't give up. As the three of them arrive home, they find a tent in their backyard, thinking that a homeless loser might be interested in living with them but surprisingly they find Rika inside. She became a stalker for a day and followed them home. It starts raining at night and Rika can't handle the cold in her thin tent. After seeing an insect inside the tent, she has no other choice but to leave her tent and spend the night outside. Naoya and the others advise her to leave and go to her own house but she is persistent and orders a bunch of stuff with her earning. After spending an insane amount of money, she decides to earn more and starts recording more videos. The next morning, she is finally able to complete her video. And just in time, her order is delivered. However, due to her being active all night, she smells worse than the boys' restroom. To overcome this issue, she makes a makeshift shower and bathes in her swimsuit. At this point, even Naoya is impressed by her determination. Later at night, Saki and Najisa decide to do something about the Rika situation. They both end up interrupting Naoya and appear in front of him wearing swimsuits. Saki wants to fulfill his wish of seeing girls in swimsuits. Najisa accidentally slips and slams her body across Naoya's face. Naoya is speechless for a while. Saki tries her best to replicate the situation, but unfortunately fails. Afterward, they both request Naoya to give them more attention. After all Rika living in their backyard is making them feel insecure. Naoya agrees and intensely stares at Najisa, taking full advantage of the situation. Gradually, Rika is getting used to living like a homeless old dude. They all sit at their dinner table, thinking about different plans to defeat the backyard boss. Najisa suggests letting her live for a while as she will get tired of running after an average Joe and will eventually return home. Suddenly, they see Rika leaving her tent and this gives Naoya the opportunity to call the shipment services and request a pickup truck to take away all her belongings. Saki wants to take the slow route and in response tells Naoya that both of them trust him to not make a move on Rika. However, Naoya, who is losing the grip, tells them that his brain almost has enough and he might start falling for Rika. Saki once again turns into a wannabe wrestler and grapples him down between her thin thighs. However, she soon gives up and they all decide to call the pickup truck. Naoya goes to distract Rika, who is on her way home. He makes a failed attempt to buy time which results in Rika getting suspicious. She hurries back home just to find out her streaming equipment is being taken away by the FedEx guy. As she is about to stop the pickup truck from taking the stuff away, Naoya grabs her from the back. Rika shouts that she is getting touched by a creep, so Naoya should let go. But Naoya couldn't care less. He holds her tightly, which makes Rika kick him so hard that he falls on the ground. But even as he is lying down, he grabs her foot in a desperate attempt. The FedEx driver is done loading her belongings. Afterward, Naoya gives Rika an IOU form, agreeing to pay her and in return, she has to stay away. Rika tears that form apart and goes straight to Naoya, telling him that she will not be going home as she is starting to enjoy being with Naoya. Suddenly, Rika's father arrives at the scene and asks about her staying away from home. She replies that she will be living with the guy standing in front of him. Her father can't comprehend the stupidity of being with a dimwit like him. And in the midst of the argument, Naoya accidentally tells her dad about her streaming account. Her father is surprised and threatens to delete all the videos from her channel. But Naoya intervenes, telling him that he always gets excited watching them and it would be unfair to delete such treasure from the internet. This makes Rika fall in love with him even more. 
Her father soon realizes the stupid act he was about to do and takes back his words. Rika threatens to disown her father if he even intervenes with her money-making business again. Later, both father and daughter leave, and Rika finally go to her own house. At this point, both Saki and Najisa are sure that Rika is madly in love with their boyfriend, and they have to do everything to prevent them from being in a relationship. Saki goes home to pick some clothes from her house and her mom. Without wasting any time on chit-chat asks if she has gotten the taste of adulthood yet but she denies it. In the end, her mother encourages her by saying that even her body is enough to excite someone like Naoya. Later, Saki appears in front of Naoya, dressed as a bunny girl. However, this low-budget Mai Sakurajima is not able to make Naoya excited. After seeing a dull reaction, Saki asks him if she is looking cute in this cosplay. And even though he agrees, he rejects the idea of him pushing her down. But due to all the sudden action, her cosplay starts to come off and is about to reveal her body. Maoya took advantage of the situation and touched her talents. Saki gave him an uppercut and ran towards her room. The next morning, Saki is in an extremely good mood and says nothing even after Najisa asks the reason behind her sudden mood improvement. Later, Najisa finds the bunny girl costume in the laundry. She goes and confronts Naoya, who tells her everything. After a while, she once again appears but this time, dressed up as a kitchen maid. Naoya, being a cultured teenager, asks her to call him master. Najisa went along with the cosplay and took care of him all day. The master kink Naoya has is getting out of his control and he went towards Najisa. Najisa thinks that he is finally making a move for the first time. But all Naoya does is ask her to dress up as a maid once a week, as his chicken mindset did not allow him to do anything further. The next morning, Rika is waiting outside Naoya's class. At this point, she realizes that she is in love with a loser like Naoya which is beyond embarrassing for her. As Naoya arrives, Rika takes him to the roof, saying that she has something to talk about. Just as they reach the school roof, Naoya decides to show his non-appealing body to Rika, telling her to spread it all across the internet for rejecting her proposal. This weird offer makes Rika like Naoya even more. Afterward, he tells her that he is a fan of hers but the only reason he can't go out with her are the two girlfriends he already has. All these kind words he was throwing went straight to Rika's heart and she felt even crazier about him. After Naoya's successful attempt to riz her up, Rika went ahead and thanked him for stopping her dad from deleting her streaming account. She always failed, so she decided to make her own future and started streaming. It is very important to her as she had worked hard, and she is glad that Naoya had protected it. Afterward, she left but couldn't hold it in and revealed how she is madly in love with Naoya. Unfortunately, Saki is present and hears everything that Rika says. Rika returns to Naoya's classroom and upon seeing her, Saki goes into defense mode and starts keeping her away from him. One of the class boys asks Naoya about his relationship with Rika and she responds in a joking manner, but at the same time goes a little too close to Naoya. Saki doesn't like it and tells her to get away from her geek boyfriend. Rika doesn't give up and tells Saki that she will have a lot of opportunities to make a move in school. And in response, Saki tells Naoya to stay close so she can protect him. Naoya thinks that Saki is lonely, so he goes ahead and hugs her tightly. However, the hugging doesn't stop even during the class. It is time for the PE class, and they need to change. Rika appears and wants to take advantage of Saki leaving him to go change. However, Saki runs off alongside Naoya and locks themselves inside a room. The only choice she has is to change in front of him. Najisa comes to clutch and sends an anonymous message to Rika which makes her leave. At home, Saki and Najisa are discussing how Naoya hugged Saki at school which makes Najisa want to hug him as well. When Naoya arrives, Saki tells him about Najisa's desires and even tells him that she wouldn't mind if he hugs her as well. She goes outside and peeps through the door just like Naoya peeps into the girl's restroom. Once they hug each other, the mood begins to improve and after a while, Najisa can't hold all the excitement inside of her and falls on the floor. Naoya sits down with her, which makes the whole scenario look different than what is actually going on. The next day, as they walk to school, Rika walks alongside them which makes Saki realize that Rika is up to something. Saki tries to embarrass Naoya by saying that even a nerd like him didn't achieve good grades, hoping to make Rika not like him anymore. However, it has the opposite effect. As they reach home, Naoya tells both of them that Rika might have a crush on him. Saki, knowing all too well that Naoya might get over his head if he knows that Rika likes him, starts talking crap. She tells him that no one could have a crush on an average-looking guy like him and the only reason she blushes is because she is always in the mood to do the deed. To save herself, she even tells him that this happens to girls with big talents. This makes Naoya realize that Najisa might be a succubus and tells her to not hesitate and ask to perform any activity she might like, as a hopeless guy like him is always in the mood. The next day at school, Rika once again visits their class. But this time, Saki's manipulation is working. He thinks that Rika is a girl always in heat. 
He apologizes to her for thinking that she has a crush on him in front of the whole class. Rika can't handle letting the whole class know that she has fallen for Naoya, so she holds his hand and runs away. Rika takes Naoya once again to the school rooftop, but this time, his girlfriend also follows them. Rika asks Naoya what made him think that she would be in love with him. He says that all the cultured stuff he watches online makes him delusional and he actually knows what's wrong with her. He reveals how she is always in heat and wants to do the deed. Rika tries to tell him that his girlfriend is lying to him, but Saki interrupts and manipulates Naoya to agree with her. She makes the excuse of having a cold, which works out as well as Winner AR's paid version, no one buys it. In the end, Naoya tells her that he is already enjoying the two girlfriends he has, and he would just reject her if she ever makes a move. They all leave afterward, but Rika does not give up. She runs to Naoya's classroom and asks him out in front of the whole class. However, she can't handle the embarrassment and takes off with Naoya once again. This time, they ditch the roof and go to the gym storage room. Rika tells him that she will keep trying until he falls for her. Naoya can't believe that a girl like her has fallen for a two-timer like him. Rika clears up the misunderstanding and tells him that the reason she fell for him was because of how he always protected her and was nice towards her. Naoya rejects her once again, but she has already developed skin tougher than a crocodile's and goes ahead and kisses Naoya. Saki and Najasa see in disbelief as their boyfriend enjoys his time with Rika. After the kiss, she tells him that it was her first kiss as well and that if he ever wants to date her, he'd better break up with his other two average-looking girls first. Interestingly, there is a fifth person listening to their conversation. It's Shino hiding behind the storage room, listening to everything like a creep, and she finds out about Naoya two-timing her best friend. Later, all three of them sit near the riverside and contemplate what just happened. Saki and Najisa can't believe that Naoya was kissed by a girl like Rika. He asks them to kiss him as well but is instantly shut down. Both Saki and Najisa want their first kiss to be special instead of being in a smelly gym storage. Saki knows that she is the one Naoya loved since childhood, and that's why she wants their first kiss to be at a moment that they will remember forever. On the other hand, Najisa wants the same thing. She wants her first kiss to be at a memorable time as well, where she will be able to take it past kissing. Listening to both of them, he bows down his head with such force that his fragile head starts to bleed and he apologizes for being too excited over a kiss. To make up for it, he suggests going on a date and decides on a hot spring. All three of them are ready to go shopping for their hot spring vacation. Shino tries to ruin the fun by asking Naoya to talk in private, but Saki tells her to keep it for later. Once they are all at the shopping center, they decide to make this vacation the best one yet and go ahead to shop. However, Rika follows them out of curiosity. Najisa isn't planning to calm down even during this vacation. She buys a breath freshener in case they kiss. Apparently, she isn't the only one as the other girlfriend is also thinking the same thing and has bought mouth fresheners for herself as well. Saki tells Najisa that it doesn't even matter as Rika has already stolen Naoya's first kiss. Looking at her being so down in the dumps, Najisa decides to help Saki achieve her first kiss as she is the one hopeless enough to go out with Naoya first. Later, they go shopping for clothes and Najisa comes out wearing a disgustingly bad-looking shirt as her motto is to make Saki look better in comparison. In comparison, Najisa, being a total freak, finds something so bad for Saki that even Naoya thinks it is bad. As they are going home, Naoya thinks that someone is following them. That someone is none other than Rika who realizes that they are going to the hot springs. Shino calls Saki at night and asks the name of the hot spring they will be visiting. The next day, they are all ready to go. While riding the bullet train to their destination, Naoya tells both of them that he will be trying his best to improve their relationship and shouts with such passion which makes the whole train cringe. Once they are at Hakon, Naoya holds both their hands at once, making the public leave everything to record such a miracle of a loser being with two hot girls. Once they reach the inn they are staying at, it looks quite expensive. As they are about to go inside, Rika suddenly appears and surprises them. But she is not the only one as Shino also appears alongside her. Upon seeing both Saki and Najisa present with Naoya, she questions Saki's desperation of being with Naoya. And in order to protect Saki's dignity, Najisa tells her that she is visiting the hot spring with Rika and their meetup is pure coincidence. Najisa is trying her best to not let this secret slide which makes the guilty two-timer feel sorry for her. Both Rika and Najisa stay in the same room. Rika is having a bath in the open and as Najisa is getting ready for one, Naoya somehow climbs the fence and comes to take Najisa away. He tells her to take advantage of this opportunity and run to their room. Najisa, who has already decided to help Saki get closer to him, rejects Naoya's offer and leaves. Rika takes full advantage of being alone with Naoya. She dips the chicken boy in the bathtub and gets ready to do some Riz things with him. Rika is now alone with Naoya. She plans to take her time and charm Naoya. As she is about to start, 
Poor Naoya thinks that this might be his lucky day and asks Rika if she is going to show her world. However, Rika has only planned to show him her talents. She later asks him about the kiss and after pretending like it didn't excite him the whole week, he tells her that it was not that exciting of an experience. At this point, she knows that Naoya is a wimp and moves towards the idea of getting to know him better. He gives her five minutes to mingle as much as she wants. He tells Rika that her favorite thing is a banana. He even tells Rika about her interest in watching MeTube and her channel is the one he likes the most. This comes as a surprise to her as she had thought that he had stopped watching her after all the recent situation. The five minutes are over, and he climbs the fence again to leave but this time, he lands in the female bathing area where Shino is present. The Walmart Amelia doesn't waste a second and rains all the questions she has upon him. She wants to stop this guy from two-timing her best friend and starts telling him all the cons of two-timing, which include money, parents, and more. Naoya tries to leave but she grabs him and stops him from leaving until he replies to all her questions. At the same time, her towel starts to come off, but she doesn't care. After trying hard to make Shino let go, his weak hands finally give up and he falls on top of her, while simultaneously, Saki and Najisa appear. Saki sees her best friend on top of her boyfriend which makes her lose her mind. Naoya's ugly mind once again awakens and he grabs Shino close to himself as an excuse to cover her body. Najisa takes this opportunity and takes a lot of photos of them to threaten Shino if she asks anything regarding the two-timing situation. Shino furiously gets up to confront Najisa but ends up revealing herself to Naoya, and out of embarrassment, she runs away. Afterward, Naoya offers Najisa to come to their room, but she rejects it to avoid any sort of complicated situation. She knows that if she pushes her luck too much, the two-timing situation might be over. After listening to her, Naoya fumingly takes off his pants and starts confronting Najisa. As Naoya is busy confronting Najisa, two random girls walk in, and Saki instantly kicks him out of the women's bathing area. After making Naoya leave, Najisa is about to leave as well but Saki stops her and says that she does not have to be so considerate for a guy like him. She should be willing to go all out without holding herself back. Afterward, Saki asks her the reason she is so devoted to a guy like Naoya. Najisa starts to explain her story about how she was a loser beyond comprehension, so much so that it was hard for her to score anything above 10% on any subject. She has tried a lot of hobbies including drawing cringe manga, playing games, cooking, and playing sports but even after spending 500 to 1000 hours on each of them, she was still not good. She was a literal blockhead who had to spend more time on things than normal humans. However, her situation begins to change, and she decides to make herself better once she sees Naoya. It was the day of the high school entrance examination when Najisa first saw Naoya. She was busy cramming all the stuff in her ostrich-sized brain when she overheard Saki and Naoya talking. Even though it was the day of their entrance exam, it didn't stop Naoya from being a hopeless soul as he asked Saki to go out with him if they passed the entrance exam. She hit him with a powerful uppercut, telling him to forget about it and not to disturb her before the examination. Shino stood watching the whole situation and said that he hadn't given up. Naoya had been shooting his shot with Saki since they were in elementary school and had been getting rejected. He didn't give up as he thought he might have a chance. Najisa started to notice Naoya and how he was able to get up and confess again even after getting rejected and failing countless times over. She started to wish to be like Naoya. Later, it was the day of the entrance exam result and Najisa was able to pass the exams but so did Saki and Naoya. However, she realized that Saki and Naoya were now a couple and there was no chance for her. Najisa had been thinking about Naoya all the time. She was in love with him. Despite seeing him with another girl, she was shameless and needy enough not to let go and decided to work hard for Naoya. She starts off by learning how to cook, run, and exercise to make herself more appealing. Najisa also started a part-time job to earn some bread. Ultimately, she was able to become who she is right now thanks to Naoya, and this is the reason why she cares so deeply for him. Naoya is on the other side of the bath and is hearing their conversation like a creep. Once they both get out, Naoya shamelessly admits to eavesdropping and tries to comfort Najisa, but she runs away in embarrassment. He runs after her, and as they both are running after Najisa, they go past Rika and Shino, who decide to follow them as well. Najisa keeps on telling him that she has no other choice but to hold back as if Saki was to get tired of their two timing situations. Their breakup would be inevitable. She tells him he needs to think things through and their twisted relationship wouldn't work out if she were not okay with being the number two. They both are still running while the other three girls give up midway. Naoya's twig-looking legs can't keep up and he ends up falling behind. However, he doesn't give up. As they are running, Najisa finally admits that she also wants to be the number one girl in their relationship. Naoya apologizes to Najisa and tells her that both of them are number one in his eyes and that he didn't start the two-timing relationship if he wasn't sure how to treat both of them equally. 
He uses this emotional situation to hug Najisa and tells her that he never wants to let go of a girl like her. At the same time, the other three girls arrive in a taxi. Shino still doesn't give up and asks Saki about the two-timing situation. But Najisa, who has had enough of Shino's questions, tells her the truth by kissing Naoya on his cheeks. Shino once again asks Saki for confirmation and Saki runs away after admitting the truth. They enjoy the rest of their day together, without worrying about Shino annoying them. Once they get back, Shino invites them to her house. She breaks the ice and tells Naoya that she is disappointed in him, as she has always thought of him as a hard worker, keeping her best friend happy but in reality. The only thing Naoya is working hard towards is gathering a bunch of girls to make his own harem. He tells Shino that he fell for Najisa after two months of going out with Saki and he is sure to treat them equally and as number one. Shino switches her attention from Naoya to Saki and asks her how she is okay with her boyfriend two-timing her. Her response is that Najisa, apart from being a rival, is a great chef. At this point, Shino has lost all hope. But Naoya tries his best to comfort her by saying that he is serious about her relationship to the extent that he already has plans to talk to Saki's mom about it. Shino doesn't know what to do as this ordeal makes it harder for her to control her feelings towards Naoya. The whole gang now starts to hang out in the dirty gym storm. There is a summer festival coming. Everyone is excited to visit it and make memories. Naoya tells them that he has saved a ton of money so they can spend as much as they desire. Naoya suddenly remembers the upcoming test and advises Saki to perform well or she will have to spend the whole summer vacation taking remedial classes. Najisa realizes that she is the one in real danger, being the dumbest among them. Naoya promises to teach her so she can pass the tests. However, all he does is make Najisa cram everything which doesn't seem to work. Next up, Saki tries to teach her but ends up making her cheat. Having no other choice, Saki calls her best friend, Shino, to assist them with this problem. The next day, Shino arrives and is surprised to see how familiar both the girls are with Naoya's house. Saki tells her that it is because they are all living together. Hearing this makes Shino lose her mind and she starts accusing them of doing Riz things as a trio. After hearing that she needs to help Najisa, Shino refuses to help her and is on her way back. However, Naoya stops her and deletes Shino's questionable photo he had saved on the phone. He tells her that he doesn't want to threaten Shino, which makes her heart skip a beat. Eventually, Shino agrees to teach Najisa. After realizing that Najisa is more brainless than she thought, Shino works hard and teaches her everything she can. Some days later, the results arrive and all of them end up passing the test. Surprisingly, Shino can't hold back her urges and wants to live with Naoya as well. Her excuse is that she wants to keep an eye on them and make sure they eventually break up. Concurrently, Rika arrives and hears everything. She is saddened to hear that Naoya doesn't even let her stay in the garden while he is letting Shino live in the house. Having no other option left, Rika runs to Naoya's house and barricades it. Rika tells them that no one is allowed to go inside until they allow Rika to live with them as well. Saki asks her what she intends to do if she wants to use the toilet. Luckily, Rika didn't repeat her mistakes and brought an emergency toilet pack. She tries to use it in front of everyone, but her pride stops her in the end. As a last resort, Naoya brings Rika's little sister to confront her. Najisa asks Naoya how he knows Rika's sister to which he replies that one day Rika sedated him in the class and brought him to her room. She tried to bribe him using her cute little sister and Naoya almost leaned in that angle but managed to stop. He told Rika that she wouldn't want to go out with someone who was interested in her little sister. Rika's little sister finally manages to put some shame on her older sister and takes her home. The next day, Rika arrives and announces that she has bought the apartment next to his house. The next day, Shino finally arrives at Naoya's house to live with them. After her arrival, Najisa asks her how the two of them became friends. Shino tells her that she is a transfer student. It was her first day. Saki noticed Shino and was surprised to see someone have a worse body than her. However, Shino had other things to brag about. She told Saki that she ranks first in the school, and her sports skills are super as well. Saki suggested becoming friends with her, but she rejected her offer saying that they were too different from each other and the friendship wouldn't last. The next day, Saki came to the class and brought two Game Boys to play with Shino. Saki told her that she didn't care about the future and wanted to be friends with her in the present. Later, Shino goes to her room and remembers the time she first met Naoya. She was walking back from school and a loser came running towards Saki and confessed his feelings. However, Saki pushed him, making him fall down the slope. This was not the last time as he kept on confessing and receiving a beating from her. One day, Shino advised Naoya to change his confession style and buy her a present. Later, they both went shopping and coincidentally saw Saki in the same shop. Shino had no other option and let Naoya hide inside the dressing room with her. However, the cultured boy couldn't control his gaze and ended up staring at her underworld, making Shino throw the creep out.
Thankfully, Saki had left the store. On their way home, Naoya gifts Shino a ribbon for helping him throughout the day. This made Shino tell Naoya to not talk to her afterward or she might start to develop feelings for him. Back in the present, later that day, Shino leaves her room and notices Naoya sleeping on the couch. She realizes that no one else is home and tries to kiss the sleeping beast. Just as she is about to be successful, Saki arrives and watches Shino kiss her boyfriend. Luckily, Shino makes an excuse and Saki ends up believing it. Shino goes to take a shower later and regrets her decision to try to kiss the nerd. She exits the washroom and runs into Naoya who just woke up. This awkward interaction makes Shino slip and fall on top of Naoya. Saki opens the door simultaneously, and a terrified expression appears on her face. Later, Najisa makes dinner for everyone and tells Shino that they arranged a welcome party for her. Shino refuses to eat with them. However, seeing Najisa request her with puppy eyes makes her take a bite. She ends up liking the taste of the food but criticizes Najisa for not including vegetables. During dinner, a fight breaks out. Shino confronts Najisa for liking Naoya even though she knows about his relationship. Najisa tells her that she will keep going out with Naoya because she likes her and has no intentions of breaking up with him. This makes Shino even more angry and she tells everyone that she will do everything in her power to make Najisa break up with him. The festival is today and Shino tells Saki that she needs to take the lead. She asks Saki if she has kissed Naoya yet. Saki tells her that she hasn't even kissed him on the cheeks. A look of disappointment appears on Shino's face. Afterward, Shino takes Saki to Naoya and tells her to kiss him. Saki tries to make excuses but can't run away this time. Naoya, after hearing what's going on, closes the lights, lights a candle, and corners Saki. He starts sweet-talking which slowly develops the mood. They are about to kiss but Saki withdraws in the last seconds and pushes the loser away. Saki tells Shino that this interaction gave her enough confidence to try it on her own at the summer festival. At night, everyone is ready to go to the summer festival. They all are waiting outside the house wearing yukatas. Rika joins them and Saki doesn't seem to be happy on her arrival. Afterward, Naoya leaves home and witnesses all the girls standing in front of him. He praises all of them for looking beautiful but tells Rika that she looks awkward. The first thing they all do after arriving at the festival is eat a ton of food. Rika tries to feed Naoya a banana, but Saki ends up eating it instead. Later, Najisa impresses everyone with her goldfish catching skills. All four of them are walking together. Shino tells Naoya that he needs to spend this day with Saki as she must be hurting from the inside. She tells Naoya that the fireworks will be starting soon, and he has to watch them with Saki. However, both of them realize that they lost Saki and Najisa. They both try to find them while Shino tells him to leave everything and find Saki just to see Naoya carrying a little girl on his back. He tells Shino that the girl is lost and that he needs to find her friends as well. Shino is trying to refuse and ends up falling on the ground, breaking her slippers. Naoya gathers all his strength and carries both of them on his shoulders, while everyone is impressed by the power of his wrist. He runs around the festival and eventually ends up finding the girl's friends. Afterward, Shino asks him the reason he is two-timing Saki in the first place. Naoya tells her that she started to like Najisa, and it would have been unfair to Saki if he kept on liking another girl while he was with Saki. After walking for a while, he drops Shino at the aid station and runs to find Saki. Rika notices Naoya running around the festival and takes him to a dark alley. Naoya tries to get rid of her by letting her know that he doesn't watch her videos anymore. This makes Rika tear up and she asks him the reason. Naoya replies that if he kept on watching her videos, he might end up falling in love with her. Naoya leaves and Rika's face turns from sad to joyful. Meanwhile, Najisa suggests to Saki that they should split up to find him and meet at the park in 20 minutes. After running around for a while, Naoya finally bumps into Najisa. As the two of them are about to hug, they notice a classmate standing next to them. They start acting awkwardly to make her believe that they are not in a relationship. Afterward, both Najisa and Naoya meet up in the park and he suggests looking for Saki. However, Najisa reveals how she and Saki made a promise that whoever finds Naoya first gets to spend time with him. They both sit on the bench and the desperate girlfriend makes the first move. She puts her hands on his hands. Naoya didn't back down and locked fingers with her. Najisa puts her head on his lap and in the end, Naoya does the princess carry with Najisa. Later, Naoya apologizes to Najisa for hiding their relationship with others. However, she tells him that it doesn't matter and that she is happy enough to just go out with him. She advises him to keep his head up as the two-timing jerk is who she fell in love with. Afterward, Saki arrives and Najisa escapes. She asks Naoya about the things he is doing with Najisa. 
and he refuses to tell her, making her very suspicious. They both start to watch fireworks together. Suddenly, Saki smells other girls' scent on his clothes. She again becomes suspicious, but Naoya manages to force her to watch the fireworks. Finally, the mood starts to get better, and they are about to kiss. At the last second, Saki remembers that she is getting too timed and abandons the kiss. To make up for it, Naoya goes and buys some sparkles for them to enjoy. She asks Saki if she is troubled with the current relationship they have and if she is hiding her pain. She replies that it feels lonely at times because Naoya always used to look at her but now Najisa stole some of that as well. She tells him that she wanted to beat the crap out of him when he first mentioned two-timing and even now, she is unaware of how their two-timing relation goes. But she believes him as he always used to be so vocal about how much she means to him. Hearing her makes Naoya cry and he goes and hugs her. Saki gets embarrassed and pushes him. Later, everyone enjoyed the sparkles together. Shino interrupts the fun and asks if they have both kissed already. Saki realizes that she forgot to kiss him and distract Shino, so she doesn't get mad at her. Meanwhile, Rika is overjoyed with her interaction with Naoya and plans to abduct him on the 31st of July. The next morning, Shino is sitting in the garden, staring at Naoya's picture she has saved on her phone. Out of nowhere, Naoya arrives, and she somehow manages to hide it. Shino asks Naoya the reason he didn't kiss Saki, and he replies that a lot of things happened with Najisa that he didn't get the time. She gets curious and asks them to show her exactly what they did. After realizing the things they did together, she gets furious and leaves. She returns to her room and starts crying saying that it is not fair that she gets to go out with Naoya while she is holding herself back for so long. Later, a bunch of camping gear arrives with a letter that says that Saki won all this. To make full use of it, they all head to the forest to camp. At the campsite, Naoya asks Saki to fill some water, but Shino ends up doing the task. While she is filling the container with water, Saki arrives and starts messing with her body. Saki tells her that she will make her excited so all the anger in her gets flushed away. Shino tells her that if she doesn't want her to worry then she should get her act together. Suddenly, Saki gets a call from Naoya. They both run towards the campsite and realize that the dimwits can't even cook food or set up the tent. Unexpectedly, Rika arrives and does the job for them. Afterward, she makes them a pizza, but Naoya is cautious not to eat it as she might have sedated the pizza. Rika makes them believe by eating the whole pizza herself and giving some of it to her little sister Risa. On the other hand, Najisa tries making food, but she keeps on burning it as adjusting the fire is difficult for her. Meanwhile, Rika is cooking perfect-looking steaks, lobsters and curry. Saki can't hold the hunger anymore and tells her that even if it is sedated, she will still eat it. She gives everyone a plate full of food. Naoya takes the first bite and tells Rika that the food is delicious. Afterward, Rika announces in front of everyone that Naoya is starting to like her. This makes Shino spit out the food she is eating while everyone is startled. Everyone asks Naoya and he doesn't deny it. Risa, who is unaware of the situation, asks Rika if Naoya already has a girlfriend. Rika tells her that Naoya is two-timing the girls standing in front of her. She confirms to Rika that she is in love with a two-timer and she gladly agrees. The little sister slaps Rika in the face and scolds her for being a clueless idiot. This makes Shino ask Rika why she is doing all this and being a nuisance. Rika replies that she doesn't care if she hurts his two girlfriends. The only reason she is being a nuisance is because she loves Naoya. He reassures the two of them that he will continue to love them and there is nothing stopping him. Suddenly, he falls asleep followed by Najisa and the others. Saki realizes that Rika sedated the food but she falls asleep soon after as well. Rika takes Naoya far away from the campsite and handcuffs him to a tree. He wakes up soon and realizes the situation he is in. Rika tells him that she did everything so Naoya can be alone with her for a while. Afterward, Rika takes Go's commando and tries to test whether she makes Naoya happy. However, she soon realizes that Naoya started noticing her and puts back her clothes. Naoya goes berserk and tries to break the tree branch while telling Rika that he doesn't want to hurt the others by going out with her. He tells her to promise him that she will give up on him. However, the opposite happens and Rika handcuffs herself with Naoya, telling him that she still likes him. Rika takes the key and puts it inside her clothes. Naoya shamelessly puts his hand inside to retrieve the key. He is about to uncuff them, but she tells Naoya that the reason she fell in love with her is because he is always loyal to his girlfriends and even protects her streaming channel. Rika tells her that she didn't give up when her channel was making no progress, and she won't give up now either. Suddenly, a notification arrives on her phone, and she tells Naoya to look up at the sky. It is bright and stars are scattered across the sky. She informs him that it is her birthday and she wants to spend it with him. Rika further tells him that even if she doesn't get to be in a relationship with him, she will still choose to make as many memories with him as possible. Naoya asks her what she will do if he still rejects her. 
Riker replies that she will have to give up in the end but before that happens, she wants to go on dates, make videos, and live in his house like the others. Hearing her gives Na Oya an idea and he tells Rika that she will be allowed to do whatever she wants with him and he will not stop her. But she has a deadline of 5 months and if she can't make him fall in love with her within the deadline, he will reject her for sure. After everything is decided, Na Oya wishes Rika a happy birthday and sets up a table to celebrate it. They both eat the cake and later he rizzes her up by letting her know that she is prettier than the stars. Meanwhile, the others who are looking for Na Oya have given up hope. Saki starts to think that Rika might do something with Na Oya while he is asleep. This surprises Najisa as she doesn't know boys can get excited while sleeping. Afterward, Na Oya meets up with them and Rika follows. He informs the others that he has decided to live with Rika till the end of the year and he will reject her if she can't make him fall in love with her. Na Oya consoles the two of them by saying that there is no way he will fall for her as these two are the ones he loves the most. Everyone ends up agreeing to this proposal and they spend the rest of the days enjoying the campsite. On their way back home, Shino thinks that she might be able to move on if Na Oya rejects her like he rejects Rika but isn't sure what to do. Rika finally came to the house to live with the others. The first thing she does is check out Na Oya's room. She tells the others that she will be living in Na Oya's room. Saki is about to attack Rika but is stopped by Na Oya. Even the cultured boy accepts it as all she will be doing is sleeping with him without doing anything creepy. In the end, he decides that four is better than one and tells the other girls that he wants to sleep with them as well. He consoles his girlfriends that he won't be making a move on others. All four of them play rock paper scissors to decide who will be sleeping with Naoya first. Surprisingly, Shino ends up winning. At night, she arrives in Naoya's room, wearing very light clothes. Her excuse is that she will take Naoya to his limits and test whether he can control himself or not. The first thing she does is lie next to him, but it isn't enough, and the desperate loner tells her to tempt him even more. She starts to reveal some parts and in the end goes all out. However, Naoya realizes that it might be a little too far and stops her. They both go to sleep afterward. The next day, Rika ends up winning and it is her turn to sleep with him. He tells the others that he barely controlled himself while sleeping with Shino. This freaks out the other girls, who start to think that Naoya really is as needy as they thought. Later, Rika comes into his room wearing a cute lion outfit. She wore it so the beast wouldn't attack her while she was sleeping. However, Rika gets tired and ends up showing her riz to him. He tells Rika that she is way too easy and needs to value herself a little more. She sleeps afterward as well without doing anything. Naoya's daily life involves a part-time job, making videos with Rika and studying with the others. Najisa asks him if he is tired of working this hard and later realizes that he might be a little sick. She goes home and forces Saki to lose the rock-paper-scissor match so she can sleep with him. That night, Najisa arrives in his room wearing a nurse costume. She starts by checking his temperature. After she realizes that he is sick, she puts Naoya to bed and gives him a ton of medicines. He also takes a holiday for Naoya by talking to his manager. Saki is listening to their conversation from the outside and realizes that Naoya must have a lot of pent-up frustration she can use. The next day, Saki realizes that Najisa only took care of him the whole night and didn't do anything. She gets motivated and arrives in his room with a bunch of magazines. Naoya gets overjoyed seeing this treasure and starts reading it without wasting a second. After a while, he feels bad and pastes Saki's photo on the girl and continues to enjoy it. Rika is done with laundry and hangs her clothes in front of everyone. Shino and Saki start mocking her oversized garments. Naoya takes a look and gets excited. However, he tries to prove that he can get more excited after seeing their clothes. He borrows Rika's smartwatch to measure his heartbeat every time he sees one. Seeing Rika's clothes makes his heartbeat reach 186. Next up is Najisa and this time, his heartbeat reaches 220. After her, it's Saki's turn. Somehow the heartbeat reaches 220 as well. Finally, it's Shino's turn but she ends up slipping and falling on Naoya. The heartbeat is about to break the record, but Naoya punches himself in order to stop it before 220. Later, Saki requests Naoya to go to the beach. The nerd thinks about studies for a while and agrees in the end. However, Saki wants to go to Hawaii, but it is a little out of his budget. Saki requests Okinawa and Naoya realize that he might be able to pay for a one-day trip. But after researching for a bit, Saki realizes that one night might not be enough and asks Naoya if she wants at least a two-night stay at the beach. Seeing how needy Saki is, he agrees and is about to ask Rika for some money. Shino stops him in his tracks. She calls her dad and arranges a vacation home she owns. Everyone is surprised to hear that the average-looking girl is that loaded. Saki decides that it is the best opportunity for her, and she needs to kiss Naoya on the beach. The other girls want to kiss him too and challenge each other. Later, they all go to shop for some swimsuits for the vacation. Saki asks Naoya to choose swimsuits for them. He ends up choosing one for Saki, and Naoya but the one he chooses for Rika is a school swimsuit. 
Rika thinks that he might have a weird kink and accepts it. Shino is surprised to hear that Naoya even chooses one for her and decides to buy the one he chooses. Rika notices Shino's weird behavior and confronts her. She asks Shino if she has a crush on Naoya. Unexpectedly, Saki arrives as well which makes Shino take Rika to another location to further talk about it. Rika knows that she tried to do some stuff with Naoya when they slept together as well. She starts teasing Shino and tells her that she will tell Saki about it. In the end, Shino admits that she likes Naoya and asks Rika not to tell her anymore. However, she has a condition. Rika tells Shino that she has to help her get a lot of alone time with Naoya in return. Shino somehow agrees to the condition and asks Rika why she is so sure that Naoya won't end up falling for her. Rika replies that Naoya would never fall for a girl who can't even express her true feelings. After some days, it is finally time to head over to Okinawa. Everyone sat on the plane and for some reason, Naoya was freaking out. Everyone realizes that he is a chicken and is afraid to fly on a plane. He starts getting scared every second and Rika tries to hold his hand. Saki tries to make her go away. Rika tells Shino to help her, and she wraps her hands around him, acting as if she is comforting him. Everyone starts holding on to him. Suddenly the hostess announces that the plane will now take off. Naoya starts panicking and hugs every single one of them. They then take the bus to Shino's vacation home. It is bigger and more luxurious than they expected, and everyone is left in awe. Rika tries to take Naoya to the beach, but Saki interrupts and tells him that he has to check out their swimsuits first. Naoya witnesses everyone wearing swimsuits and tells them that it is three times cuter than he had expected, although his reaction to Rika's swimsuit was average. This makes her realize that he doesn't have a weird kink and goes to change them. Najisa also goes to prepare food, and Saki and Naoya are left alone. They both sit on the shore and look at the beautiful sea. The mood starts improving and he is about to kiss her, but she runs away. Najisa saw everything and took the opportunity and cornered Naoya. She tells him that she wants to make Saki happy as she is the one looking forward to this vacation the most. Najisa further said that seeing Saki happy makes her happy as well. Naoya is touched by her kindness and hugs her. Najisa tells him that he needs to mat up and kiss her as being a wimp won't do. He hugs her once more while Rika and Shino stare at them from afar. Rika decides that she will be stopping Naoya from kissing Saki and tells Shino that she needs to help her as well. Afterward, they all are sitting together, and he asks Saki to go somewhere private. She agrees and both of them are about to leave. However, Rika stops Naoya from leaving but he slips through her grip and runs away. Rika threatens Shino that if she doesn't stop Naoya, she will reveal her secret to Najisa. Having no other choice, Shino runs into the ocean and throws away her swimsuit. She tells Naoya that her swimsuit is floating away. Naoya goes towards her and grabs her swimsuit for her. However, she still needs to hold him and grab him, making the excuse that her leg is cramped. In the end, she punches Naoya in the face and takes him out of the ocean. They take him inside the house while Rika takes the door key from Shino and locks herself inside along with Naoya. Rika makes the first move and gets on top of him. Saki and Najisa arrive, and Shino tells them the whole situation. While Shino and the others find the spare key, Rika is taking full advantage of the situation. Naoya wakes up soon after and Rika lets him know that she abducted him so he can't kiss Saki. She tells Naoya that he can kiss her instead. After gathering up the courage, she kisses him on the cheek. Naoya, who is expecting more, is sort of disappointed. However, she doesn't stop there and continues to kiss him. Unfortunately, the fun ended as Shino and the others found the key. They enter the room with bats to beat Rika, but she has already escaped through the window. Afterward, all of them are having barbecue by the shore except for Rika and Shino who are thinking of their next plan. Shino tells Rika that the best way to stop them from kissing is to feed them a lot of garlic. Later that day, Shino is standing on the edge of a cliff thinking about the ribbon that Naoya gifted her. Suddenly, Naoya arrives and notices her holding the ribbon. He tells her that he appreciates everything she does for the others including how she chose the same school as Saki even though it was easy for her to get into a top school. Unexpectedly, a gust of wind flies the ribbon away. She jumps in the water to retrieve it, however, a huge wave takes her underwater. Naoya dives as well in order to save her. However, after reaching the shore, they realize that they are on a different island. Their destination was not far but it was getting dark. Naoya decides that it is best to swim back the next morning. The first thing they need to do is find some water to drink. They manage to find a coconut, but accidents keep on happening to them. Unexpectedly, a snake emerges and Naoya takes her back to the shore. He notices that her swimsuit is drenched and asks her to take it off while he starts a fire. Shino makes up her mind to be brave and leans on Naoya. The disgusting loser gets excited and keeps on trying to catch a peek. Later, Shino tells Naoya that there is a boy she likes, but she hasn't told anyone about it. She tells him that it will be trouble if they both start going out, so she is trying her best to control her feeling. Finally, Naoya is successful in making a fire. 
He praises her for being so thoughtful and caring about how others feel. Shino realizes that his hands are wounded because he tried so hard to make the fire. She starts crying and decides that it is now or never. Eventually, Shino lies on top of him and finally kisses the loser. Naoya is surprised after what just happened and tries to ask about it. He thinks that it was an accident, but Shino clears up the misunderstanding, telling him that it was not an accident this time. As he is about to ask further questions, he realizes that Shino has developed a fever and is sweating. It is morning already and the fever keeps on getting worse, having no other choice. He picks Shino up and swims back to the shore while carrying Shino on his back. They don't have the energy to move after reaching the shore, and Saki comes running towards him. She started crying and telling him how worried she was. Saki finally kisses him while all Shino can do is watch them. After reaching home, Naoya keeps on trying to apologize to Saki for causing all the trouble. Rika notices the weird tension and asks them about it. She realizes that the two of them might have kissed already. They both confirm this fact and Rika gets furious. She asks Shino about it and why didn't she stop them but all she can do is apologize. Rika tells everyone to leave and asks Shino what happened. She tells her everything that happened including the kiss. Rika is about to beat her up but gets calm after realizing that they didn't do anything more than kiss. She asks Shino if she got the chance to confess to him. Shino replies that she tried but ended up getting sick and was brought back to the shore by Naoya. Afterward, she saw Saki crying which made her realize that she really did care for Naoya and wasn't unserious as she thought. Afterward, all of them arrive in the room and Shino announces that she will be leaving school. Saki is calm for a while, but Shino confirms that it is not a joke and then she starts to panic a little. Saki keeps on asking her to tell her the real reason, but Shino keeps on dodging her questions. In the end, she tells Saki that she has made up her mind and nothing will stop her. Saki loses her mind. She starts calling Shino a washboard and tells her that she will not be satisfied with her lame excuses. She tries to fight Shino and Naoya manages to hold her off. Saki tells her that she won't let her go until Shino tells her the secret she is hiding. Shino has enough and she loses it too. Saki tells her that it is important for her to know as they both are friends. Hearing this statement makes Shino cry and she runs away. Later, she is sitting on the shore and Rika asks her what she is trying to achieve. She makes fun of Shino which makes her cry. Shino tells Rika that no matter what happens, it is better to leave without telling Saki anything as she will only end up hurting her. Rika doesn't believe what Shino said and tells her that she definitely will start to have second thoughts and might even think that she should have asked Naoya to three-time her. To prove her resolve, Shino deletes the picture of Naoya she had saved on her phone and is also about to throw the ribbon away. However, the memories rush to her and she stops at the last second. Rika tells her that she will pay her back for helping her. She messed with her phone a little and ran away. Afterward, Naoya along with Saki and Najisa arrive at the scene. She tries to run away but Naoya stops her. He tells Shino that he knows she has been hiding her feelings for Saki's sake. But the idiot still wants her to tell them. He further tells Shino that both she and Saki care about each other so much and he doesn't want them to break up like this. Shino starts crying but finally decides to say it out loud. She tells Saki that she has had a crush on Naoya for a long time. With that out, Naoya instantly rejects her. Saki, not knowing how to react, starts fighting Naoya for instantly rejecting her friend. She starts crying and hugs Shino for hiding her feelings for so long. Saki ends up forgiving Shino for everything. After they return home, everyone is anxious around each other. Shino heads out and tells them that she will be going home. Saki asks Naoya to go and cheer her up. The first thing Naoya does is ask for forgiveness for rejecting her. Shino tells him that if he manages to make the two of them happy and still has some capacity left, then she could be her third girlfriend. Saki, who is eavesdropping, gets surprised as well. After saying this, she runs away while everyone is still surprised. They all reach home and Shino welcomes them with some sweets. She tells Naoya that she will help him study from now on and anything else he wants help with. Saki tells him once again that he can think of her after making sure the other two are happy and Naoya agrees with her reasoning. Later, she apologizes to Najisa for always talking down on her for two timing. Afterward, she offers financial support to Naoya and tells him that she will do anything to make sure his two timing works. This makes Saki remember that Shino had done something on the island that she shouldn't have. Shino finally reveals the secret that she kissed Naoya after pushing him down. Najisa and Saki are beyond shocked. Saki beats the crap out of Naoya for being a filthy man. However, Shino informs Saki that it is all her doing, which makes Saki switch her attention towards Shino. While everyone else is fighting, Najisa is sitting in the corner, realizing that she is the only one who still hasn't killed Naoya. Saki tells Shino to apologize to Najisa and advises her to take her chances and kiss Naoya who is unconscious right now. But she refuses and tells her that she will try sometime later when the mood is right. 
Naoya wakes up and consoles Nagisa that he will do everything in his power to make their kiss the best. This was all about the two-timing loser. Will Shino ever get to be with Naoya? Comment girlfriend below and subscribe to the channel for more plot-filled recaps.